Hey y'all, welcome back to the Shepherd of Hermits class and we're starting at Similitudes 5. Similitudes 5. And we're talking about a true fast and the rewards of it. So, okay, so now it also says also of the cleanliness of the body. Are you going to talk about that in this class? Not with this class. This class is going to be broken up into, I guess, two pieces. And okay. the first class is just going to be about the true fast. I understand the true fast. Alright, well, you ready? Yeah, I think we're going to let um, the audio read for us. Are we? No, I don't No, you don't like that? Okay. No. You want me to read for you? Yeah. All right. Similar to five of a true fast and the rewards of it. Okay. Also, and it, well, starting here, verse one, it says, As I was fasting and sitting down in a certain mountain and giving thanks unto God for all these things that he had done unto me, behold, I saw a shepherd. Who was wont to converse with me, sitting by me, and saying unto me, What has brought thee hither thus early in the morning? I answered, Sir, today I keep a station. So at verse 1 we're seeing where Hermes and the shepherd are just basically meeting and greeting each other. And the shepherd is asking him, uh, Why are you here so early and what are you doing? Yeah. Now, what is this station part? Position, place, post, post in class, rank, location, situation? I don't know. Why would he call it a station? I don't know. Well, the word station is only used in scripture one time that I could I could find in um, the concordance, and it did it referred to like as of a place. It didn't refer to what um, a fast. Okay. Now, now, it's, like you said, it's been a long time since you did four. So maybe you ought to talk about who this is that's talking with him. Who, who is this shepherd individual to bring everybody back up to speed? Well, the shepherd is uh, the angel of repentance. Okay. And he is with Hermas and he um, comes in and he speaks to Hermas and he teaches him things about uh, commands. He teaches him um how to uh, live unto the Father and things of that nature. So, uh, okay. So the her so the shepherd is kind of like a teacher in this book. Yes. And right now he's going to teach Hermas about uh, fasting. He's going to teach him about fasting, and you're going to be amazed that the fasting that we are doing is not necessarily the fasting that the Father requires of us. What do you mean the fast that we are doing? Well, we mostly uh, our fasting is. In the quote unquote Christian world, is abstaining from food. Okay, and you're saying that that, that ain't quite what we're expected to do. Well, there's other parts to it. Okay, other parts to it. Okay, well, let me go on. Verse 2 says, He answered, What is a station? I replied, It is a fast. He said, What is a fast? Now, this is the angel talking. I answered, I fast as I've been wont to do. Ye know not, said he, what it is to fast unto God, nor is this a fast which ye keep, profiting nothing with God. So in uh, verse 2, the angel is asking him what is he doing, and he's also letting him, he's, Hermes is telling him that he's fasting. And the angel is saying, the fast that you are keeping, it profits nothing. Nothing. Well, no, be careful. He says profit. Profiting nothing with God. Profiting nothing with God, yes. It now, does profit some, but yeah. profits nothing with God. There, there is benefits to the abstaining from food fast. I've studied it a long time ago, and I may need to, to do some research before I you know, talk on it, but I, I'll go ahead. It, the way I understand the fast when you abstain from food, it gives you a heightened sense of awareness. It makes you it kind of open up. Um, some communication pathways help you think a little bit better and that kind of thing. But what he's saying here is, you, if, if, you know, and we know the scripture to be true. But what he's saying here is that type of fast may benefit you, but it doesn't have, it doesn't do anything as far as the Lord is concerned. Correct. You know, when you when you said that about how it opens, gives you a heightened sense of awareness. Well, you know, when you eat a lot. You become sluggish and you know you lethargic. Yeah, yeah, lethargic, and you just really you want to go go to sleep or just lay around and chill out. So you know it's just the opposite effect when you're abstaining from food. It gives you, like you said, that awareness. Yeah, yeah. keen makes you keen. Uh, the the animals they they use it by default, like a lion or a tiger or something out there in the woods. When it the hungrier it gets. The more dangerous it becomes, it's thinking clear, it's, it's, it's hearing stuff, it's, it's paying attention more, it's, 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 um, 
it's at the, the top of his game. Whereas at the, after he's just aiding the antelope, you might not be able to get that thing to move at all. Right. Just like a, um, I guess like a snake. Yeah. Like yeah. a snake. Snake mm -hmm. will eat something he'll lay there in that same spot for a long time, weeks. Right. All right, verse 3 says, Sir, said I, what makes you speak thus? He replied, I speak it because it is not the true fast which you think that you keep. But I will show you what that is, which is a complete fast and an ex and acceptable unto God. Okay, so three just uh, further ex explains that he's telling him that it's not a true fast that he's keeping. So the angel is going to help Hermes out, help us out with what it, what it, what a real fast looks like. Yeah, actually, it tells us in uh, scripture in Isaiah what a true fast is, and Hermes is so good about just bringing out scripture to us with everyday life. Well, let, let me go over here to Isaiah see what it says. All right, let's look over here at Isaiah 58, see what you're talking about. Any particular verse or what? Well, let's start at verse 3. We're going to find it in actually verse 5, but let's start at verse 3. Wherefore have we fasted, they said, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou keepest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye pleasure and exact all of your labors. Okay, so who is this talking here? Do you remember? This is the Father. This is uh, God talking. So he's telling them, you know, he said, we fasted and he gave no account. But looks like he goes here says, behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure. It means you're finding pleasurable stuff to do on your fast and you exact all of your labors, meaning you're going to work. Right. So that's a reason not to honor the fast. If you're not really fasting if you're partaking in pleasure and, and doing labor. Okay. Verse 4 says, Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Right, right. He's telling them, well, basically, that it's just doing the fast wrong, that they're fasting uh, out of anger, and they're fasting um, They're fasting with wickedness. They're doing wicked, wicked things during their fast. Okay. And five is the one you say you're most interested in. It says, it is such a fast that I have chosen. Is this such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush or to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast, an acceptable day of the Lord? Well, this is physical stuff. This is humbling ourselves. Uh, you know, when we afflict our soul, we humble ourselves. When we bow down our head, um, when we put on um, sackcloth and spread ashes, this is humbling ourselves. <clears throat> Going on to 6, he'll tell you exactly what the true fast that he will have us to do. Yeah, I see that. He says, and not is not this the fast that I have chosen? So this is the fast that he's actually chosen. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. Okay, if you can read on to number seven. It is not to deal thy bread to the hungry. Is is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out of thy house, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh? It's saying that, that we are what? To to give give bread to the hungry. Mm-hmm. Um uh, to bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, so we bring the poor to our house. Oh. You know, back in um, in the in these times, uh, that you remember where the uh, they would bring people who would come to a sojourn over or were traveling. They would say, "Well, we'll sleep out of the street," and it was like, "No, don't sleep out of the street. You come and you know you stay with us." Talking so about people, Lot, would, Abraham yeah, people and yeah, people would lodge with each other. They wouldn't have their brother sleeping out. Uh, you know, they wouldn't have their brother sleeping in a hotel or, you know, other places where they could stay with them. So, okay. uh, but this is, but this is talking about poor. Well, and I don't know if this one is, yes, yeah, it's poor that are cast out. So the poor may be strangers. The poor may right. be people, you know, homeless people, you know, not necessarily friends or family, but you know, people that you that may not know or may not can do anything for you. When thou see if the naked that thou, that thou cover him. So, Part of the fast is giving people clothes. Giving and people clothes, food, shelter, clothing. 
Okay? And thou and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. And this sounds like that you gotta be with your kids. Be with your uh your brothers, be with your sisters, be with your your uh your 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 quote unquote tribe, be with your your people. Well, this is a very good find, Stacy, because it, like you said, it goes right along with what Hermes is about to tell us. Right. All right. You, you ready to get back into Hermes? Yep. All right. I think we left off on number four. No, mm -hmm. was it four? I think it was number four. Yep. You sure? I thought we was past that. Harker said he, the Lord does not desire such a needless fast, for by fasting in this manner. Thou advances nothing in righteousness. Okay, so he's telling Hermes to listen that the Lord, that the fast of abstaining from food is um, needless. Needless as far as righteousness. Remember, it does have benefits. It right. does have, and we, we, we cannot put the, the fast away and say that it has no benefits. But what Hermes is trying to say is, uh, what he's saying is that it advances nothing in righteousness. Right, right. So you may be abstaining from food, you may be getting other benefits, but it ain't helping us as far as righteousness is concerned. Yeah, it's kind of like a selfish fast. Yep, yeah, and that's what. Yeah. So in this, we'll see that there. Uh, um, it's a personal fast. Fast abstaining from food and water is a personal. It's a personal fast. fast right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Verse five. You ready? Yep, yeah, I'm ready. But the true fast is this: Do nothing wickedly in thy life. But serve God with a pure mind and keep his commandments and walk according to his precepts, nor suffer any wicked desire to enter into thy mind. Well, that's going back to what Isaiah is saying about how you shouldn't do uh, allow wickedness, you know, to come up on you um, uh, to uh, serve, serve the father with a pure mind and keep his commandments, keep his statutes, keep his precepts. Okay. And this is a uh, this is a fast that will profit you something if you want to receive some re receive something from the Father. Uh, these this is a fast that will profit you to um, get the ball rolling. Okay, now but he's going to give more detail than this, right? Right. right. Because he's saying do nothing wickedly in our life. <laughs> okay. Um, we we I guess when we think of fasting, we don't think of the whole life. I guess we'd be thinking about dying if we was thinking about not eating a whole life but this other kind of fast we can you know do no wickedly that whole life it says but serve God with a pure mind and this is really and keep his commandments so keeping his commandments is a part of the fast keeping his commandments is a part of the fast yeah and walking according to his precepts, precepts. And, okay. and suffer not any wicked Desire wicked thoughts to enter into your mind. Right, it is talking about Isaiah. And then y'all jump back over there at Isaiah and, and look look at it again. Um, but we're going to move on. Uh, 6 says, But trust in the Lord, that if thou dost these things, and fearest him, and abstaineth from every good work, thou shalt live unto God. Yeah. You want to talk about that? We trust in the Lord. Oh well, well it's just part it's part of the things that's required. It's well, part it's of trusting trust the, the commandment. Lord. Yeah, trust in the Lord, fear him, and abstain from every every evil work. I mean, it seems like this doing evil, uh, and staying away from evil has a lot to do with this this yeah. true fast. Yeah, and and like you said, we never really thought about fasting in this way before. You know, it was abstaining from food, and then you're abstaining from a whole lot of stuff. Evil works and you know, wicked desires and Bad things thoughts. of this world, bad thoughts. Yeah, so it's a whole totally different kind of fast. Yeah, you know, you was what you were saying about how uh, food is just a different abstaining from food is a different. It's not. We're not supposed to do away with that. It's just something different. I wanted to uh, show you in Zechariah seven. Hold where, on, we're gonna go to Zechariah seven. All right now, Zechariah seven. Any particular verse in that one? Let's go to five. All right, we'll go down to five. You guys can push the pause button if you want to see these other verses up here. We're gonna jump down to five. It says, "Speak unto all the people of the land and to the priests, saying, When ye fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those seventy years, did ye at all fast unto me, even to me?" So, and this here is saying that he did allow them that the fasting of staying away from the food, because on to six he's talking about the eating. Um, it, the fasting, they did abstain 
from the food those 70 years so that was a part of it this here is just something to bringing it out uh, uh -huh. um i don't know the word you would use um it's making it where you could it's it's bringing it out more so just which like which one hermes is or zachariah no, is zachariah bring it uh, out hermes, that, hermes is, is bringing it out more okay uh sort of like the third testament it brings out makes everything clear. yeah it makes everything clear. brings That's truth and say, clarifies makes everything. everything okay everything all right so any more on this one Nope, I think that's it for that one. All Let's right. go back over to Hermes. Well, that's a good point. Now, where are we at on seven? It says, If thou do this, thou shalt perfect a great fast and an acceptable acceptable one unto the Lord. So that's a summation of all the things that he's saying. I mean, we're going to talk about it some more, but he's saying, you know, the uh, abstaining from the evil thoughts, uh, not doing wicked, bringing your brother the food, clothing, and shelter, uh, trusting in the Lord, fearing Him, and abstaining from every evil work. He said, if you do these things, you should perfect a great fast. Okay. And one that is acceptable unto the Father. Now, now it looks like it's about to get into something else. Right? It's like they said, hearken unto the similar to which I'm about to propose unto thee. Now, I believe this is, did you want to talk about the similar to or? Yeah, well, I guess we're going to have to read it. But in the next class, we'll go on to explain it because I would hate to skip that part because there's some more information about the fast on the other side of that. Do you, too. do you just want to let the do you want do you just well, yeah, there is. But and it's and it's kind of odd in this chapter how it puts this similitude in the middle of it to try to explain fasting. But it, it is, you know, a little long and it is, you know, um kind of convoluted you know and such so do you want to just do a separate uh video for the similitude and its explanation and keep on the fasting part and make them make this a two-part class or yeah you, let's do that you, you read it okay yeah. well uh well we're gonna give them the option of reading it if they want to well right? what verse are you going to next then because you, all you're talking about is skipping a few verses so the verse that we'll go to next is um Now I'm scared. And I'm going through here. If you want to, if you want to pause and read what's what's in between here, that's why I'm clicking through here like this, so you can push the pause button. The verse we'll go to next is verse 24. All right, so we got a ways to go to get to verse 24. Now, what about that parable? You want to say anything about the parable? Just to, I mean, they can catch it in the other class, but any anything you want to say about it? Well, the parable, uh, it is uh, talking about fasting. But it's in a strange kind of way, but though. But in a strange kind of way. Well, yeah. no, in the, in the way that we're learning in Hermes, because what you have is the individual who who was put in charge of the vineyard that's doing all of this extra work, and that's kind of like what Hermes is trying is, is explaining to us that you know we're, we're given a certain level of responsibility that we have to do for our personal lives, but if we go above and beyond that, then we're getting into this Hermes kind of fast where we're, you know, doing charitable deeds. And in the parable, you know, he was, he, 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 um, disseminated the laws and the commandments to, you know, a bunch of other people and he did a whole lot of extra stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, it is talking about fasting, so make sure you get the next class where we go on to expound on it. All right. Now, verse 24, that's right, 24? Yes. It says, I said unto him, Sir, I know not these similitudes, neither can I understand them. Unless you expound them unto me, I will... I will, says he, expound all things unto thee, whatsoever I have talked with thee, or shown unto thee. Okay, we can go on to Well, he's, he's, a, he's, he's, he's right here at the end of the parable. This parable that, you know, I think is about 10 or 11 verses or so. And, and Hermes don't understand it. I can't say I understood it the first time. I, well, I actually can't say I did not understand it the very first time I heard it. You know, I actually had to listen to it a lot more times before I got it. But that's the way parables are. It says that, um, you know, parables are meant for those who love the Lord can understand them, while those who don't love the Lord or the Word so much, they just won't get it. Right. Just don't don't bother with it. Don't even bother with it. 25. Keep the commandments of the Lord, and thou shalt be approved, and shall be written in the number of those that keep his commandments. But if besides those things which the Lord has commanded, thou shalt add some good thing, 
thou shalt purchase to thyself a great dignity and be in more favor with the Lord than thou shouldest otherwise have been. So 25, he talks about just keeping the commandments. If you keep the commandments, you'll have a um, good, like a good, good sense with the Lord. You'll have good standing with the Lord. Um, thou shalt add some great thing. Thou shalt purchase to thyself a greater dignity. Okay. And be in more favor with the Lord by keeping the commandments. But I think anybody been in Herman's Academy more than a few days knows that it's all about the commandments. Yeah, Hermes is all about keeping the commandments. Well, the Bible is all about the keeping the commandments. The scripture is all about keeping the commandments. But in Hermes, we just teach them a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And try to, try to bring out their importance. All right. 26 says, If therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord, and shalt add to these stations, thou shalt rejoice, but especially if thou keep them according to my commands. So he's telling them, if you keep the commandments and add them with this, station with this fast then um and especially if you keep the uh, commandments according to the commands that he's given you then you shall uh what have good standing with the lord yeah and i hate to put you on the spot here but i can't resist what's the difference between a command and a commandment here in this verse 26 a command is an order a commandment is a set of orders right well commandments you get them out of the um the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, there's there's a command starting there in Exodus chapter 20, and it goes all the way to chapter 24, has statutes, judgments, precepts, you know, and all kinds of stuff. Whereas commands, commands or mandates, you hear that in the book of Hermas, where it's talking about, you know, additional rules. It's not different, it's just additional kind of stuff, like above and beyond. Whereas, just to make up an example of what I mean by said additional, whereas the Old Testament might, might have said don't kill people, the, you know, these additional rules might be to actually love them or to like them or to do stuff for them. Yeah, like bringing out more. Yes, mm -hmm. they is, and, and making us better people. And so there is a difference between the commands and the commandments. And what he's saying here, I believe he's saying that if you, you have to keep the commandments and then you have to do the things that he's talking about here in accordance with the commands, meaning the commands of of um, of Hermes, which is talking about what? Um, anger. It's talking about putting away your wife. Malice. It's talking about, uh, yeah. Malice. It's talking about slander. You know, a bunch of different things. So if we are trying to keep this station. And we're trying to keep those commandments, but we're not. But we have anger in our heart or malice in our heart. Then it's not going to work out for us. That's right, what it sounds like because you're just doing it for a show, like, and it's not actually changing anything. So you guys go over there and look at you know some of our other classes. You can look up Hermes commands, and you can see uh, the classes we've given on commands, or you can search the the uh, anywhere. It's all over the web. It's all over YouTube. The Book of Hermes is, and you can look at those commands that he's talking about. 27, ready to go on? Mm -hmm. I said unto him, Sir, whatsoever thou shalt command me, I will observe, for I know that thou will be with me. I, wis, I will, said he, be with thee who has taken up such a resolution, and I will be with all those who purpose in this manner. So to me, he's saying that if you uh, take it upon yourself to do this here, then I, the shepherd of repentance, will be with you to help you along in doing this. Right, he's saying he's going to be with you. Now, we got to understand what the, in, in, and we find this in other parts of the book, what the shepherd of Hermes promises us. He promises to run an interference with some of, some of the stuff that's going wrong in our life. It may be knock us off our kilter, get us out of our game. Well, when we put forth some kind of effort to, to stay on our game, then the shepherd of the, the shep the shepherd that we're talking about, this venerable angel, he comes in and kind of protects us. Mm -hmm. Makes it so the people, you know, so their their angry darts don't reach our mark, they don't meet don't reach his target so often. Right. You know, kinda mm -hmm. give us a break from it. Mm-hmm. All right. Ready to go? Yes. Twenty eight. For it says, This fast, saith he, whilst thou dost also observe the commandments of the Lord, is exceeding good. Therefore, thou shalt keep it. Okay. Well, you know, what is brain? And notice how it keeps talking about the commandments and how you have to do the commandments. So you could imagine if you, you grab the, um, like this is the only class you looked at. You said, well, I'm going to do the Shepherd of Her Hermes fast. I Meaning, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to do good deeds and I'm going to do all of this stuff. But if you're not keeping the commandments, what is that going to do for you? It's not going to do anything because how many times have we fasted 
and you really see no results. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You go on a fast and you um, abstain from food and you go about doing all your daily stuff, you know, your daily little stuff that you got to do. Never, uh, you know, I've had times where I fasted and haven't even thought to, you know, mourn before the Lord, pray before him, cry out, you know, to him. I'm just saying I'm abstaining from food, which is what we've been taught mostly. The main thing with that we were taught was just abstain from food. Right. So and you're supposed really to get what you want. But how is that profiting the Lord? You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's not. It's, no, it's not. Well, well, look at verse 29. First of all, take heed to thyself and keep thyself from every wicked act and from every filthy word and from every hurtful desire and purify thy mind from all the vanity of this present world. If thou shalt observe these things, this fast shall be right. Has he gotten into what the fast is yet or he's kind of just warming up to it? Because um, he is going to give us some specifics, right? He is going to give us some specifics, but this is... It go this from 30 to I believe 34 is it. If you don't get it from there, then okay. So it is going okay. So, but he is still kind of warming up to it, kind of letting us know the importance of the fast or this act or this station, the importance of keeping the commandments and the importance of keeping the command. He just taking a few verses to do so. All right, verse 30 says, "Thus therefore do, having performed what is being written." That day on which thou fastest, thou shalt taste nothing at all but bread and water. And computing the quantity of food which thou art wont to eat upon the other days, thou shalt lay aside the expense which thou shouldest have made that day, and give it unto the widow, the fatherless, and the poor. So what he's telling us is that, you know, when you, well, this is talking about the food, taking, eating bread and water so is he telling us that we can have food well but yeah he's 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 telling you that you don't abstain from food altogether that really does no no good or pro or, or purpose he's saying go ahead and eat just eat you know eat minimal eat, eat very minimal food you know eat um because he's talking about the expenses that you would have normally have spent on your extravagant meal you know whether whatever it is and take that and give it to the fatherless or the poor or the widow. You eat bread and water that day and give the money you would have normally spent on 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 your McDonald's Happy Meal and give it to give it to the poor guy outside of the door. Well, that makes sense, and I can see how that can uh, lead to you know righteousness and and things of that nature. So yeah, okay. that makes sense. All right, we'll go on. Thirty one says, and thus thou shalt perfect the humiliation of thy soul. That he who receives of it may satisfy his soul, and his prayers come up to the Lord God for thee. Well, we talked about in other classes how when we pray, we want the, well, when we do something, we want the poor or those who are less fortunate than ourselves to be able to go before the Lord and pray for us. Well, the poor people's prayers are a lot more powerful than a rich man's prayer. You right. know? And, you know, here in America, we all think that we, you know, we, we well, pretty well off when we should, at least because we are compared to, you know, a bunch of you know, third world countries or whatever. But even here in America, the ones that don't have as many material stuff or have, don't have as much stuff, you know, that, you know, may find themselves in the, in, in the way of hunger or thirst or loneliness or whatever, these guys are used to praying a lot, you know. Whereas the, the guy who's rich and, you know, haughty or whatever, his prayer is just thank you and may you give me more, more room for the stuff that I always got. So, you know, the, the prayer of the, of the poor is more powerful. And he's saying when we, when we give of our substance, when I, you know, um, give the poor person a, a little bit, you know, um, uh, of what I have, he goes before the Lord and he prays and he prays for me. And that does me a lot of good. Well, we was listening to something this morning, and I forgot exactly what it was saying. It was talking about forgiveness when you um, don't, you know, don't be upset so much when you have to forgive somebody. Yeah, that was the third test, and I can't remember exactly what chapter it was on. But it was saying, you know, these people who are here to persecute you, they are that. They are here to persecute you, and they are they are strengthening you in your spiritual walk. So how can you have something against these people who have helped you so much. Right. And I was thinking that that's the same with being poor. You know, how can you be so upset about being poor? Because it only strengthens you and brings you closer to the Father. Well, yeah, you got to remember the, the, um, 
the promises of, I can't remember who was it, Haggai or Habakkuk or one of them said, why does bad things happen to good people? You know, and why does the why does the wicked people prosper? And what he told them was, is that, you know, uh, it's their riches in the end times that's going to choke them and strangle them, you know, so, you know, cause harm in their life. So don't be envious of what they have because that what they have is going to be hurtful to them. Right. Right. And, and then we learn in the Third Testament how materialism, material things like cars and watches and cell phones and such, keeps us from having clear communication with our Father. It kind of puts a block there. Well, I'm seeing that more and more, and I know this might be out of the way of the class, but I'm just seeing that more and more every day how this material stuff gets you stuck in a spot where you don't want to communicate. You don't want to, you ain't, and, you know, you have no communication with the Father. Yeah, well, the Third Testament talks about how a lot of people, and it, we need to get back on subject, but it talks about how a lot of people are blocking themselves from being spiritualized because they do not want to get away from their material stuff. Hmm. Okay. All right. 32. If therefore thou shalt thus accomplish thy fast as I command thee, thy sacrifice shall be acceptable unto the Lord, and thy fast shall be written in his book. What book? What is what book is he Well, there's about? a there's a book you learned before that the angels carry out these before the Lord. I can't remember if it right. was Hermans or whoever right. told us that we have angels that Every act that we do, they carry him before the Father. Mm -hmm. Rather, you know, good deed. I think I think it may be Satan. He may be the only one that carries the bad deeds up mm -hmm. there, and, and mm -hmm. you got the angels blocking him or whatever. But these things are being written in a book. Every every good act that you do is being written in a book. You go out here and give somebody some of your herbal tea, herbal tea, or help them, you know, with their groceries or mow their yard for them. That's actually being written down in what was. Call the book of life. There's a chapter, I think the Third Testament chapter 6 talk about the book of life. So when they come before the Lord, because we know they travel back and forth, back and forth, and they go before the Lord as well as Satan, and they go before the Lord and, you know, they can present this to the Lord, the things uh, that, you know, say that you've done, the things that I've done, the things, whether they're bad or evil. And he's saying that if you uh, carry out this fast in the way that I'm telling you, then your name will be written into this book not necessarily your name not your name not your because name you're talking, yeah. you may be, you, and, I, and I be, I'm very cautious on that because you may be talking about a whole nother book right this right, right. book that he's talking about here is kind of like yeah your deeds. and it may be a chapter in that book you know maybe another section in that book but this one is recording all of your deeds yeah your deeds are written in that book and they present it to the Lord and well uh, when you when you are when you get ready to go into Heaven, or you know, where I don't, I don't, you know, that's a little beyond what I can explain. You know, I can't really explain heaven, you know, in, a, in, a, in any detail. But I do know that when you try to enter those quote pearly gates, this book is going to be presented for you. You know, it's going to it's going to be right there in your face. You know, that's what it means by some will rise to joy and some will rise to corruption. Well, if you are, you know, doing good deeds all of your life and, you know, here you are standing, you know, in, in the pearly gates and you find out that doing good deeds was a good thing, you're going to be quite happy. Right. But if you find out, no, that if you if you was the person, that, you know, you thought it was a bad thing to help people, you thought you were supposed to be stingy, well, you're going to be, you, you're going to be ashamed. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Talking about the book. All right. Let's go on to 33. This station thus performed is good and pleasing and acceptable unto the Lord. These things, if thou shalt observe with thy children and with all thy house, thou shalt be happy. So he's telling us this, this fast should be observed not only um, for ourselves, for our personal selves, but it should be observed with our children and with all those that are in our home, right? Well, and I, I could throw in a personal story here because when I learned about merits and doing good deeds, I ran off and started doing them. Right. And, and what happened? Uh, well, you start receiving rewards for it. I start getting big rewards for it, and I start climbing Jacob's ladder a lot faster than you guys. Right. And, and, and you know, I kind of left you behind mm -hmm. because you weren't doing any good deeds. You weren't doing any charitable deeds. And uh, partially my fault, I didn't really, I, all I knew was I needed to go do some of the good deeds, and I ran up to the, you know, five of his children up the street and, you know, did something or nothing or whatever. Not really important. But I did notice benefits and gifts and spiritual gifts, mm -hmm. you know. So, and I think that's what it's saying here. If thou shalt observe with thy children, because what happens if you get spiritualized and your children aren't? 
I get left behind. Well, you, you, you're on a whole nother page. Right. You know, I used to tell my friends, I done leveled up. You know, I'm in a leveled up status, but yet here are, you know, my, my children, and they still kind of, you know, back, you know, in the, in the Pisean, you know, age kind of thing, and, and it started to cause problems in the house. Mm -hmm. So I think the important thing to bring out here is when we're doing our charity, like you said, when we're doing our charitable deeds, we have to include our children. They got to go with us. And number 34, which is going to be the last one we're going to cover. All right, in conclusion, and whosoever, when thou hear these things, shall do them, they shall be happy, and whatsoever they shall ask of the Lord, they shall receive it. So it's saying that we don't, not necessarily have to wait for the pearly gates to uh, receive, I mean, you know what I'm saying, to receive the things that we ask of the Lord. If our names are written in the book, that they are presented to the Lord, and I mean, if we do this true fast, then the Lord, if we ask of things, the you thing we're them. fasting for, the thing right. we're fasting for. So, so now, to understand the way this works, I'm going to go out and do some charitable deeds. I'm going to, um, I'm going to only eat bread and water. I'm going to give away the other, the other food portion to the poor, and I'm going to do stuff for, for people. And then, you know, not only will I be happy, but it said, whatever I ask for the Lord, I'm going to receive it. That's what it's saying. You know, it sounded like when the Messiah was telling us that, um, you know, you said, he said to um, give and it, that it shall be given back to you. So whatever you do, um, come, come back to you. Come back to you, yeah. All right. And, and you know, and that's, you bring up the, the Messiah here and, you know, some that I heard today in the class, um, well, in, in, the, in, the, in the audio we was listening to. Uh, from the Third Testament, it was talking about the example that the Messiah left for us. And when you look at his life, wasn't he doing just this? I mean, that's all that's all he really did was walked around helping people and doing stuff for people and, you know, feeding them and healing mm -hmm. them and, mm -hmm. you know, blessing them. That's so that's that's what he did. So it's all about doing things for others. Right. Okay. All about doing, doing things, things for, others. for others, doing things for others and. Well, so are you? Are we summarizing this fast up to say that it's about uh, extinguishing those wicked thoughts and doing wicked acts and doing things for others? Well, we can't have the wicked thoughts anyway. We can't. We can't. We got to get. Well, I understand that those have to be gone anyway. He says, abstain from all wicked desires um, throughout their life. Well, we can go back up to the beginning up there since we finished. You know, that was the last verse, right? Yeah. So coming all the way back up to. The beginning. Uh, number five. Oh, I'm glad you called me there. But uh, the true fast is to do nothing wickedly in that life. So this is expanding out throughout the whole life and serve the Lord with a pure mind. Whereas this other one, he said, when you when you actually do decide the day that you're going to keep the fast, when you pick a day that you're going to keep the fast, then then you do this other stuff. You abstain where you eat food and water, uh, bread and water, and you um, help the poor and and the fatherless and and widows. So we know that um, we should be fasting, and you know, uh, you know, entreating the Lord for different things. But a very important fast is coming up. Oh, Atonement Day. Very Atonement Day. So let's get start getting our practices in. Yeah, we definitely need to start getting our practices in. Atonement Day is the one uh, feast day that we are asked to. Uh, afflict our souls or fast in this manner. And that's kind of you know where a lot of people you know putting that stuff together is you know for Atonement Day. And I'm glad we got this class out of the way before Atonement Day because this this is some good information. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. And you know it, one of these Atonement Days is going to be a very interesting one. I don't know if it's two. I think it's going to be 2018. But you know if it's not, then I'm gonna say it's 2019 and 2020 is going to be. A very very interesting one, meaning you know it, when it's at its fulfillment, we're expecting some life or some earth changing activities like earthquakes or volcanoes or that sort of thing. So if we are out there participating in this kind of fast, then maybe we're out there helping people during this earthquake. Right, right, right. So right. we're instead of you know in the house, you know, uh, fasting and you know uh, not abstaining from food and you know not doing anything other than you know being in our house. Maybe we're out there in the street, or at least got our doors open, with the, you know, to help people that may need help. They maybe provide a, a ref.
refuge for him to come. I don't know. Yeah, that's what he's saying. The true fast is, you know, that's what that's what I'm hearing him say. All right, go ahead and wrap it up, Stay. Well, uh, yeah. So we now we've learned what a true fast is. We ask that you come back to the next class where we're going to talk about the similitude, where it's talking about fasting as well, but just in a different way. Uh, and we're going to explain the similitude. I guess that would be uh, similitude five, part two. Well, are we going to explain it? Where are we going? To, are we going to talk about it? Well, we can. Whatever you want to do. All right, y'all. We're going to wrap it up for part one, and whatever Stacy wants to do for part two of similitude five. All right, we'll see you in the next class. Shalom.